data stage as well as my database is having Teradata as well. First let me start with what I am going to give you into the ETL tool and what I am going to give you in this data stage okay, as well as then Teradata then what we are going to discuss in a project level also. Right. I'm just opening here what the content we are going to cover while we are discussing about the this IBM InfoSphere data stage and quality stage 8.5. Now currently into market we have data stage version that is 8.5 as well as 8.7 and prior to this one we have different flowers of data stages available that is 8.1, 8.0.1 and 8. I'm sorry, 7.5x to those versions of the different environments is there. If you want to learn any data warehousing tool, we should require a minimum knowledge on the data warehousing fundamentals. Right. First let me give you a brief introduction about what we are going to discuss in actual classes regarding these fundamental topics, means about the data warehousing basics. If you see my course content, what I prepared okay, to give these classes, I divided this into different units. This first unit is going to clearly give the information about what we are going to cover under data warehousing fundamentals. Okay. Here first any session we are going to start with the what is the introduction to the data warehouse, what is the meaning of OLTP systems, what is the purpose of data warehouse what is the basic architecture we are going to implement while implementing any data warehouse what are the different type of operational stores we are operational data stores we are going to implement do we have any data marts involved in the project okay are we going to implement any okay uh, warehouse like life cycle process means what is the life cycle process we are going to involve generally while implementing any data warehouse those things we are going to cover under unit 1. While I am giving this unit 1 topics, I will completely go into take, well, let me open that, data warehousing basics PPTs which is preparing me, okay, to give you the, those, okay, the basic information that is nothing but simply we are going to call as a data warehousing, okay, basics, we simply uh, use Here in the data warehousing basic concepts also what we need to discuss means here we need to discuss about why we require a data warehouse. What is the basic difference between operational systems to the data warehouse? What is the introduction to the data warehousing applications? What kind of architecture we are having? Okay, modeling concepts we are also going to discuss. And we are also going to cover you about the operational data stores and what are the kind of <coughs> schemas we are designing while implementing any warehouse and what is the different type of ETL products we are going to implement and life cycle also. Okay. So all the basic concepts we are going to cover under ETL okay, data warehousing fundamentals. <coughs> Let me show you what I am going to cover okay, about uh, 2 to 3 minutes what I am going to cover under these basics okay here first first classes we are going to discuss about the operational systems means while implementing any data warehouse every day you are going to receive the data from the some of the business transactional systems those transactional systems we simply going to call as a operational systems okay these operational systems whatever we are having those are simply used as a business backbone systems. For example, if you are going for one of the biggest okay, store, you are purchasing some products there. What are the products you purchase there? Okay, then they are going to maintain that data in a corresponding operational system. Means if you, for example, if you went to another bank, you want to open an account in a bank there. Whenever you want to open an account in a bank, once you submitted your corresponding okay, related documents based on your account type, 
the data that whatever the bank employee is going to enter that is going to store in corresponding operational system okay means an operational system is a system which is going to maintain a daily transactional data okay we are going to discuss this one first because every business have some operational systems okay what kind of operational systems is available what kind of characteristics will be there for operational system okay and we are also going to discuss about the what is the definition of data warehouse what are the different uh, base features we are going to follow this warehouse what is the difference between OLTP and OLAP okay what is the basic uh, fundamental process we are going to follow while implementing data warehouse like top down approach or bottom up approach those things also we are going to follow here means we are going to discuss under this basics right once this architecture is completed then we'll go into the second unit of the data warehouse that is data modeling but while discussing any basic concepts also we need to have a clear understanding about the how these are going to be integrated in a project we are discussing a data warehouse definition we are discussing an operational system we are discussing a etl process right those how these going to be integrated into the any of the project okay let me show you how i am going to discuss while discussing any of the basics also about this etl things and about these uh, things in a project level let me open one of the project documents see here for example i am opening a simple okay project here this particular project whatever i open here this project having n number of source systems and this is having a landing box this is having some okay etl server and this is having a data warehouse here this is nothing but simply enterprise data warehouse here these whatever i am showing in source systems these are nothing but our client front end systems which are going to provide a data every day into warehouse these are simply we are going to call as a operational systems here if you see these operational systems in our project level architecture we have a some some systems are into mainframe some systems are into hp unix some systems are into tandem like this but other servers whatever we have landing server is there application database server is available and here also we are using data stage as quality stage and we are also loading the data into the final okay enterprise data warehouse database as well right in the middle we are also using some other tools to do this kind of a sftp process also okay like this whenever we are discussing even any basic concepts also we are going to integrate those basic concepts with the project architectures then you can understand where these basics are going to be incorporated into actual data warehouse okay that is the thing we are going to cover in first unit of the this course content let me open it once the first unit is completed then we'll go for the second unit in the second unit what we are going to cover this is going to completely give you information about the data modeling process what is this data modeling what it is going to do in the data modeling here a data modeling is nothing but the creating a logical structures for the real time business for example we are working for a one of the banking project if you want to know how many tables involved in that particular data warehouse what tables is there what kind of columns is there what data types is available those are all the kind of okay uh, stuff if you want to know we need to see the some kind of modeling documents here we are going to discuss what is the meaning of a data model what kind of data modeling processes we are having what is the meaning of er model what is the meaning of dimensional data modeling what is the meaning of normalization because while loading the data into any data warehouse we are going to follow the process of normalization as well okay that normalization process also we should know first normal form how to apply first normal form second normal form third normal form and how to implement a data warehousing schemas as well we should know star schema we should know how to implement snowflake schema those fundamental topics also we are going to discuss while implementing any data warehousing 
process. Right. For the second unit also, because these are also basic concepts, we are going to completely follow the slides. Okay. PPTs here. Yeah. Based on this particular PPT, we are going to discuss what is a model, what are the steps involved in the modeling, what are the levels of modeling available, okay? What kind of the different type of entities and attributes is involved in the project? What is the meaning of ER modeling? What is the meaning of dimensional data modeling? What is the meaning of fact? Types of facts available in the, while implementing any data warehouse, okay? Different type of the dimension tables is there, different type of fact table. These are all the things also we are going to cover under second unit, okay? See, these, once these two done, then we'll go for a ETL basics. Means, once you are aware of the data warehousing fundamentals, if you want to move into BI industry, then we are going to know the basic information about the ETL tool, whatever we are going to discuss. The tool we are going to cover here is a data stage. First, we are going to give introduction about what is the meaning of ETL, what kind of ETL tools available in the market? How we are going to do these kind of ETL operations in the market? Those things we are going to discuss in a ETL design process. And we also need to know what are the different flowers of this data stage available. Okay, means we should know the history of this data stage as well. We are going to discuss the version that is 8.5 currently. But before this version 8.5, what are the different versions is available? What are the main advantages or what are the main features added into this data state 8.5? Apart from the existing uh, business features or existing uh, technical features in the tool. Okay, what is the major architectural difference between the, the old version that is 7.5 x2 to the 8.5? Those we are going to discuss uh, under the unit. Four. Okay, let me open what kind of the things we are going to cover while discussing the that particular, uh, I think it's not opening. Right, I'll show you that one when actual class is going to start. Okay, what kind of the new features is added in the 8.5? Let me open. What are the new in this, uh, okay, WebSphere or data stay, okay, that uh, InfoSphere data, uh, data stay version 8.5. What kind of the uh, new features is added means that is the information server is added. And okay, upgrading the data stage version 8.1 onwards. Okay, what kind of the understanding and the cleansing process and transformation, what kind of process we are going to do with this information server? And okay, how we are going to do with this information uh, server functionality? Okay, what functionality are going to perform? Okay, those things we are going to discuss while we are working under the this um, data stage and quality stage design of one. Okay, what are the new flowers is added in the this data stage? See here. This is a very old version slide I am showing here. Okay, those versions of the data stage. Uh, seventh version of data stage like this we have. But from the eighth version, it is very, okay, rich. And it is having a better uh, look and feel, okay, and is very user friendly also. And it, we can also implement a quality stay process from this version as well. And there is a quick find option is also added in the eighth version. For example, in the older versions of data stage, I created one of the ETL component today. After 10 days or after one month, if I want to know in which folder this particular component is available. If I want to know which folder this is available and when this particular uh, job or ETL component is modified by last time, who modified, what modifications he done, such a kind of the searching if you want to do. In older versions, it is very, very difficult. But when it comes to data stage 8 version onwards, means from data stage 8.0, 8.1 and 8.5, okay, we will be able to do this quick find option. Okay, by using that, we can easily search a particular job, who modified last time, when it is modified last time, what kind of modifications we did, is there any dependent jobs available in this particular job, such a kind of information also we can do, that is simply we are going to call as a a repository search. Okay, that is also one of the new added feature. And okay, impact analysis is also there, one of the new added feature features available. And okay, some utilities, extra utilities are available, cross project compare, compare against, to compare a one project data with other project data. 
for example we are doing a kind of migration in a project while we are working into the migration project of data warehousing by using this data stage tool if you are moving a code from older version that is 7.5 x2 to 8.1 or 8.5 after moving the code we are also doing some kind of small enhancements to your project if you are performing some small enhancements to your code after doing the small enhancement you need to identify whether my new code having those enhancement okay enhancemently added features or not then you are going to compare your existing code whatever we have with the what are the code we have in old version okay such a kind of old version data if you want to compare with the new version also there is a one extra feature added in data stage that extra feature we simply call as a cross project compare and compare against okay those we are also going to discuss while discussing about the this data stage 8.5 like this they added so many okay advanced features in the data stage 8.5 apart from this okay in stages wise also they added lookup stage transformer those we will discuss later we are going to discuss those basic concepts while discussing the this data stage 8.5 architecture as well as the what are the new features is added in the this data stage 8.5 and what kind of the components also involved in the 8.5 here what is this components means whenever we are working on data stage tool there are two types of components is going to install once we install the software of data stage into your machine right those client components are server comp means those are the client components is available and second one is server components is available if you are working as a data stage developer or quality stage design or quality stage developer or a data stage administrator you are going to completely log in into data stage client components you will be able to access those client components to do some kind of operations to do some kind of ptl operations to do some kind of quality operations to do some kind of administration operations also apart from this client components we also have one more kind of components available in data stage those components are nothing but server components these server component software is also going to be installed on unix mission or linux mission okay when you run any of the etl component because of this etl component which you designed in etl client side that is going to execute on a server side okay that is the reason you should also know little bit about unix or linux flowers as well because our server software is installed on a unix mission or linux mission okay that thing we are going to cover in fourth unit after this we also going to discuss about the data stage installation process how we are going to install this data stage what are the major things we required while installing the this particular data stage also right for different missions while installing the data stage we are going to have different okay uh, ways we can install just uh, for example if you want to install the data stage 8.5 if you want to install data stage 8.5 into your mission your mission should have either operating system should be either windows xp or windows 2003 server or windows vista or windows 7 also will support if you want to install 8.5 at least you should have a ram minimum of 4 gb to 8 okay minimum is 4 gb at actually it should have 8 GB RAM is going to be supported in no mission and hard disk is okay that is not a problem and while installing data stay also you should install first operating system then you are going to install .NET then you are going to install any of the database then we will be okay installing the data stay software in actual class we are going to discuss how to install these all the things once installation is done in any mission you are going to receive some of the components into our desktop see here these are the client components actually available in data stage while you are working as a data stage okay developer or data stage uh, employer or something whenever if you come into these client actually 
these are broadly divided into two categories. One is called a data stage administrator client components. Second one is called a data stage okay, uh, user client components. User means that is nothing but developer. If you see in these all the client components also, the below two belongs to completely data stage administrator client components. Okay, this is nothing but a web console for IBM information server client component. This is a administrator client component. This is simply we are going to call as a web based client component and this is a desktop based client component. Means desktop based admin client component. Okay, how to work on this data stage administrator? If you see in market, okay, in requirement if you see either in DICE, Carp to Carp or any of the job portals like okay Monster India or any other company direct requirement any consultant when you observe the requirement there are different positions you can see here one is sometimes they are going to ask you we required a data stage information server administrator whenever they ask that requirement okay you need to have a knowledge on the data stage administrator part how to create a projects how to handle the projects if today one new employee joined into our company okay how we are going to create a, a username and password to that employee and how we are going to allocate roles to that employee in case sometimes what are the ETL components are developed by a developer those are going to be locked if those are locked in data stage that is also going to unlock by administrator okay so all the things also we are going to discuss because I have a good experience on this uh, administrator part also I can give you separately if you want up to one month of time about this particular data stage administrator also because if you want to apply a data stage administrator part you are going to have separate uh, complete administrator how you are going to handle how you are going to install a separate patch software and how to uh, uh, clean up the var spaces in hard disk servers or how to okay or do kind of concurrent running of programs when uh, uh, jobs are running on ETL servers okay so those are all the things we are going to discuss in admin part that is going to completely representing the unit 6 in course content we mentioned that is in sorry uh, unit 5 in we mentioned that is into the 5 but while discussing the data stage tool actually First, we will go for the data stage development side, then we'll discuss about the admin part. Right. Here, the rest of the client components, whatever we have in data stage, those are completely going to give a information or those are completely useful for working as a data stage developer role. Here, in the developer, in the sense, you may work as a data stage developer, you may work as a quality stage developer, you may work as an information analyzer developer. Okay, you may work into the metadata analyst and okay, operational metadata quality analyst as well. Right. If you want to work onto this data stage developer, what are the client components mostly we are going to use every day and how we are going to work? See, if you want to work as a data stage developer, okay, you want to work or you want to get a job as a data stage developer, these two are the major client components which we are going to use in data stage to develop the data stage jobs right let me show you how you are going we are going to log in into this data stage designer client component and what kind of work we are going to do there see I'm telling that we can be able to log into the data stage and we can be able to do some kind of work right what is the data stage designer client component what kind of work we are going to do in the designer let me log in I am simply double clicking on this particular icon when you double click on this particular icon it is going to open data stage design line component for version 8.5 here we need to pass the our host server name where we install our data stage server components and what is the username of this mission and what is the password and what is the project name okay just uh, I'm opening with my password after that I'm also going to open different project and after we also jump into this project what is we are having here also see this is the project name also we need to select because on the same ETL server 
my server for example 80 on my server port 9080 there may be n number of projects is going to run due to that reason we need to select the which project you are going to work see here here we have so many projects see there okay i'm going to select a project my project name is analyzer project and click on login when you click on login now it is logging into data stage environment right let me right it will take one or two uh, minutes to show you that okay uh, designer window in time one second see here actually the from the unit 6 onwards it's going to completely going to give the up to uh, that uh, unit uh, 9 it's completely going to give the information about the data state development process means with the designer client with the director client with the management activities what we can do how to create the routines how to create the configuration file okay how to do the parameterization of jobs how to call the environmental variables how to connect with the SAP environments or XML environments or web services from data stage so all the things we are going to cover under unit 6 right okay now we just log in the data stage designer this is a data stage designer window in the data stage designer window if you see here we have just new boxes available in this one we have most recent data quality jobs routines shared containers stage types others and assistants okay we have these all the subfolders is available if you want to log in most recently opened one actually in data stage there are different type of jobs is available one is called parallel job environment sequencer job environment mainframe job environment server job environment okay just today okay I'm showing you how to log in into parallel job environment but in actual class we can also discuss how to work on different other environments as well now to log in into this particular parallel environment from the most recently opened double by selecting this one double click on this environment when you double click on this environment now you are into parallel environments okay apart from this you also need some more components to design the jobs what are those means to get those components simply click on view button when you click on view button here there are two more need to be selected one is called palette and second one also need to be selected one is called repository right this is completely a data state designer actual window it is going to have a repository it will have a palette it is going to have a canvas this is simply the space that you will be able to see under parallel this is nothing but a canvas right what is this repository first like okay in other tools informatica or in sap bioday like okay in other tools we are going to create their our own repository but when it comes to this data stage etl tool no need to create any repository by your own automatically a db2 repository will be created in background means on server to maintain the all etl components whatever you designed if you see in this repository also what kind of folder structures is there data elements is there ims databases is available ims view sets jobs machine profiles means jobs means what are the components you developed actually so all the things will come under the jobs actually okay i'll also open i'll show you how to create the jobs as well today and machine profiles match specifications parameter sets routines shared containers stage types like this we have a some of the parts available apart from these two because of sorry apart from these because of quality stays also added from 8 point version onwards there is some other components also will be there extraly into this particular repository those are standardization rule sets is available because while working into this data stage quality stage you are going to provide a better quality based on the country okay we want to check whether the customer whatever he wrote okay are we going to maintain the customer address information or not 
okay whether this customer address is correct address or not to check such a kind of things we are going to use the the quality stage rules whatever we have in the this standardization rule set just let me open one of the country rules if you click on us there are different kind of rules is available okay us address rules is available in the quality stage and us area rules us name rules us preferences rules us taxation id rules these are the different type of rules we can use here in quality stage to do classification and these also these rules it's also whatever we have classification is tables either if you see here cls let's call classification tables dictionary tables okay in plant tables and patient tables and if you want to set your own rules also you can also set some of the rules as well okay just let me open one of the rules right click go for uh, uh, one second i think it will not be open here actually that we can open through okay some notepad or something i'll show you just uh, i'm doing a provision but already the provision rules is available that i can show you as well in, in actual classes how to do it how to create our own rules apart from the built in rules also for example we are working for a client they have their branches in the throughout the world but we have a rules of this call stage into for specific country right it's it's provision if you want to open we can open through quality stage i'll show you that one okay now it's provision means copy it just just copy it those rules into here i'll show you how to open this one also now these kind of standardization rules also we can see and metadata what are the metadata we are getting those metadata information also we are going to store and the waves rules here this waves also one of the quality stage real test uh, process only what is the full form of waves means world wide address verification and enhancement system that particular stage also requires some quality stage rules those rules which is stored in the repository which is there actually in the server side it's going to maintain these all the countries rules also for us there is some rules okay for uh, okay other countries also for norway for okay italy great britain france okay for in okay england dunk like this we have different different countries is there different different rules available this is nothing but repository what is the meaning of repository means a repository is nothing but a centralized space on data stage server which is used to store all the data stage components right apart from repository we also have some other is also available in data stage that is simply we are going to call as a palette what is this palette what kind of information we have here a palette is nothing but the collection of stages means in data stage whatever we are going to call is called a stage a palette is nothing but a collection of stages which are used to design data stage jobs those jobs may be server jobs those jobs may be parallel jobs those jobs may be mainframe jobs those jobs may be sequence also here what is the meaning of a job a job is nothing but an executable component which we create in data stage etl2 if you see in the palette there are different categories of jobs stages is available general stages quality category stages database category stages and uh, development by debug category stages file category stages processing category real time restructure and if you want to create apart from the existing stages your own stages if you want to create you can also create your own stages as well under favorites category right if you see in these all the stages also the data quality is very very useful while implementing quality process means data quality is a kind of stages which are used to design a quality stage jobs okay i'll show you how to design quality stage jobs also up to data stage 7.5x2 quality stage is a software that is separate component which is not included into data stage but from data stage version 8 onwards we have quality stage also included into this data stage but investigation stage mns stage reference match standardization and duplicate match a match frequency quality stage legacy survive waves these all the stages are from even from 8.0 also 8.1 also but in 8.5 there is an extra stage is added 
that is simply we are going to call as a SQA. Okay, this is nothing but a standardized quality assessment stage. This stage also we are going to have in this data stage 8.5 to make the data into standardized format. How to use that one? We can discuss under quality stage when we are discussing. Even in database also, from what is the basic difference between from earlier versions to this version of data stage 8.5 means in 8.5 that is InfoSphere data stage, we have all the database stage also, but those all the base stage also they put a connector stages. If you see here, Teradata connector, DB to UDB connector, ODBC connector, Oracle connector, why means? In earlier, we have all the states are all the uh, database states are used to connect with those corresponding databases. For example, see if I use SQL Server, I can be able to connect from data stage to SQL Server. I am going to fetch the data from that SQL Server into this data stage. But in earlier versions, we have all our only enterprise stages. But from data stage seven point sorry eight point five onwards, we have completely all our connector stages except few still okay few stages are still enterprise only okay means the database is a stages which are used to connect with the corresponding database environment to fetch the data from the those database tables that is about database and debug and development category is also available files category these are used to connect with the different type of the files if you want to take the data from the JetOS you can take you can use JetOS file if you want to take the data from the mainframes means we are also going to use a CFF stage that is simply we are going to call as a complex plot file stage. This complex plot file stage is used to specify the complex plot file formats like a single file format data or multi file format data also we can read through this complex plot file when we have data in a mainframe files. Okay, the rest of files whatever we have we are used to take the dot txt data dot csv data dot dat data those kind of the flat files simply we are going to call those are flat 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 FLS okay flat files what are the flat files you are having those flat files data we simply going to use or going to read by using this file category stays in data stage next is processing category these processing category stays are you do some kind of the transformations whatever you want to do in data stage okay See here, aggregator means to do the sum, summing, average values, minimum values, mean values, like this aggregator stage, change apply, change capture, compare, copy stage, join stage, match stage, remove duplicate stage, pivot stage, pivot enterprise stage, modify, lookup, slowly changing dimension table, transformer stage, wave generator stage, switch, like this there are so many stages are available under processing to do almost all the kinds of transformation, right. Here. What are the new stages are added from the this data stage version 8.5 and 8.1 onwards? Here checksum is another newly added stage which is used to do a kind of the checksum operations whatever we can be able to perform in databases and uh, pivot enterprise also another newly added stage in data stage. This pivot enterprise stage also used to do kind of the uh, reverse pivot operation actually that is also we are be able to do here and next is the pivot stage. And next is the okay slowly changing dimension table. This slowly changing dimension table stays whatever we have in data stays is used to do SCD implementation, SCD type one, type two implementations in data stays and surrogate key stage. There is few difference between the surrogate key stage to the whatever the surrogate key stage we have in earlier version of data stage also. Rest of stages are common, and this wave generator stage is a newly added stage from the data stage eight point five. Okay. Apart from that, we also have some real-time stages. These real-time stages are used to connect with the real-time applications like Java, like Web Services Client, like MQ, like XML applications. Apart from this, for example, you want to connect with from data stage to other tools like SAP, Siebel, PeopleSoft, those kind of environments if you want to connect, you need to install a separate plugins into this palette. Once we install these plugins, you will be able to log into those corresponding environment from our data stage because data stage is a okay diversified tool which you are going to use to connect into multiple environments. 
you can connect with XML applications, you can connect with the Java, you can connect with the PeopleSoft, SAP, Sebel, okay, those are all the kinds of external environments applications also you will be able to connect, right? Those stages whatever you have, these are free stages, okay, those are will come automatically when we get got a software. If you want SAP, Sebel, PeopleSoft, those things, you need to install those separate plugins. Apart from those real time, we also have one more kind of stages available in data stage. Those are nothing but a restructure stages. These restructure stages are used to do a kind of restructuring operation. Column combination, column dividing, like those kind of operations we have to do, right? And apart from this palette, we also have one environment is nothing but a canvas. Here this canvas is used to design the job, right? Let me open what are the jobs we already designed for the previous batches and how we are going to use those jobs. Just uh, I'm opening the jobs. Oh, just one second. First let me open with the quality stage job. Then we can go for the See, okay, this is a one of the quality stage job which we designed in previous uh, batch people. Okay, here this job is to do the some kind of quality operation. Just like this, we are going to design in a canvas. I will show you okay how to design, how to establish a links. Okay, from this stage to this stage, and okay, uh, from how to put a targets is the files and how to put source is the files. How to use this is the quality stage stages. Everything we are going to discuss after designing. This is an option which we are going to use in data stage to compile the job. If I click on this compile, it's simply going to be compiled. If everything is passed, file name and everything is ready, then you are able to compile the job. After compiling that, you can be able to run the job as well. Just uh, if you click on run option, it's asking us to run that application. Just let me show you how it's going to run and what kind of data it's going to process. Okay, just I run, I click on run button, but it, is it run or it's aborted? Okay, we don't know, right, it's running now. Because it's taking the to huge amount of data, it's processing the data, okay, preventing quality state process. This is a very bold job, it may run or it may not run, okay, we don't know. See, just now I run my job, okay, I want to see whether this job is successfully completed or not. It's showing some kind of color here, see here, okay. If the, all the links are showing yellow color means that job is successfully finished. Okay, like this kind of jobs, how to design, how to design a com. See, a very simple job designing is very, very easy. Because while discussing a data stage, while discussing especially from unit 6 to unit 9, is all the things we are going to cover. How to use these all the stages in data stage, how to run the jobs, how to implement a performance tuning. See, designing a job, okay, and running a job is very simple. It's not a big deal or something. But every job, whatever we are designing, it should be have a good performance. Okay, it should have a good performance. Whatever the good performance we are having, those good performance need to be up, move into the from development to SIT phase, SIT to SAT phase, SAT to UAT phase, UAT to production also. Right? Just I run one job like this. Again, I am opening the my sorry, not palette. Those jobs are saved in the repository. Okay. Is all the jobs are saved in the, uh, under the jobs category. That is simply a job which is used to do the some kind of quality operation. And let me open a database job which is we are loading the database. And uh, just uh, if category jobs, merging operation with the different different databases. See here if you if you see in this job which is having a source. These are the sources three, and these three are the targets. And this is a reject link which is going to cap capture the rejected data while doing a ETL transformations in data stage. Let me compile and let me run this as well. I'm simply compiling this job. Okay. Now just let me run this. Now it's going to be run. Okay. Maybe the files are successfully, the tables is there, then it's going to run. If table names are wrong or something, then it's going to fail also. But this is the way generally we can run a job. What happened to the job? Is it? See, you want to know 
whether the job is running in a data stage or not. Simply click on tools button, go to run director. But we want to know whether this is running or, or okay, it's still okay, hold or something. Such a kind of information if you want to know, you are going to use a one more component that is data stage director. See, I am just logging into data stage director, right? We just finished this is the job, right? JPXFM, this is the job, right? This is going to show a short look, short form of the that job also, right? Image, short image. Here the job is finished. If you see this one, you can see that the job is finished. But whenever it is having finished with the C log in a sense, you can be able to see log also. That we can discuss how to see the log. If you right click on this one, click on view log, you will be able to see log. But some of the warnings is there, but you so rectify those warnings. But finally, the job is finished successfully, right? Like this, you are going to able to run the jobs. You are going to create the jobs. Just let me see. And while designing any data stage jobs also, you will put like this kind of the annotations also. What is the name of the job you are creating? Who created the job? And when? What is the use of the job? After putting this canvas and everything, naming conventions and everything, performance tuning, simply compile your job. Okay. Every job we are going to design in class. Just in a demo, I am showing you already designed jobs. But actual class, we are going to completely discuss about the how to put every link and how to run the job also completely. Right? These are the jobs I created for the one of my okay batch students. I am using these jobs to run this. Okay, even this is a normal data stage job, and uh, this is for quality stage, MNS investigations. Okay range examples, uh, row generator examples, row gen column gens, see here, okay, this is also one job which we are having here with the n number, yes, uh, some simple sort example, okay, some of the other example, these are the common jobs, apart from these jobs, let me re-log into my data stage to show you some complex jobs, just uh, I'm re-logging into this designer, Okay, ADM mine is my password into the system and I'm opening one of my other projects. Because just now I showed you okay simple simple jobs but while working under the project you are going to receive some kind of ETS education documents. Let me show you what kind of documents you are going to receive. Okay, I'll show you, I'll give you and I'll also share you these all the documents what are actually I'm going to show in class. Apart from these documents I'll also share you a lot of documents which are required. Sorry, sorry are required to design job cell. One second. Mm, yep. Okay, this is a kind of specification document which is opening now. This is a kind of specification document. These kind of ETL spec document they are going to give you based on this spec document what is the source, what is the staging area, okay, what is a target table. So all the things also we are going to use in data stage to process that into data warehousing.
okay see here uh, next like this we are going to receive the some kind of technical specification document based on this technical specification document you are going to design actual jobs let me show you some other uh, some critical jobs which we are going to design uh, again morning batch okay this one this is a kind of okay some complex jobs also we are going to design depend upon our requirement we are going to design these kind of jobs okay same this all same compilation process is same and running of the same okay this is the way we are going to discuss okay when we are discussing from your uh, to nine okay every day by using these stages how to design the jobs how to design the complex jobs when you are working on to any project what kind of jobs you are going to design and uh, what kind of complexities you are going to face how you are going to design okay for with good performance tuning to all the things we are going to discuss up to once we design the jobs with uh, okay newly added states and resource estimation properties and with performance optimizer properties and everything then we'll jump into the job sequencer in data stage while you log into the data stage environment we have some separate environment is also there that is simply we are going to call as a job sequencer let me open here see just in before we opened the parallel jobs now i'm opening the sequencer jobs here what is the sequence of jobs means it's also have some of the stages like parallel jobs okay here sequence of stages is available this we simply we are going to call as a activity stages whatever the activity stages available in data stage sequencer these are used to create a kind of a batch jobs see i am a one data stage developer i design five jobs one of my colleague is also one more, one okay developer he is also doing a job development he design five jobs like this we totally design 200 jobs now these 200 jobs we want to put a dependencies which job need to run first which job need to run next okay these kind of dependencies we want to set and after setting up the dependencies we want to run those all the dependency jobs into a batch okay that dependency jobs if you want to put as a batch we have a specially designed environment that is called job sequencer that sequencer also how to create a sequencers what kind of dependencies we are going to put in a flow because for, uh, developer one design five jobs maybe these five jobs are going to run parallelly or first job of developer one is ran then immediately second developer first job may run because of dependency based on the business flow that we need to set up in the sequencer once we set up that business flow in the sequencer we are going to give this entire sequences to some of the third party scheduling people like uh, autosys controlium tivoli these kind of scheduling tools we are going to use to schedule our jobs okay apart from this sequence we also going to discuss how to create the scheduling batches if you go for for example controlium you are going to create some kind of draft files okay how to create those draft files and how you are going to work on the this kind of controlium tools also we can discuss let me just show you how we are going to have a this control m tool okay what kind of just this is a guide one of the guide documents we have we don't have those tools but see in control m we have two client components is available control m enterprise manager and control m desktop control m desktop is a client component which is used to create kind of uh, see we are going to log in like this by specifying username and password by specifying the host computer name once we log in into control m desktop just let me show you we have in below control m enterprise manager once we created the this kind of draft files we can see such a kind of graphical uh, job flows actually let me go for the control m i think control m desktop see once we log into control m desktop here we can be able to create the this kind of flows actually which job it means control m is a tool which is used to schedule what are the jobs you have or what are the unix scripts you have what are the autosys uh, sorry what are the sql queries you have those are all the things we are going to schedule in a control m desktop means once we create a draft file that draft file we are going to move into control m enterprise manager and there we are going to run these batches we are going to run cycles we are going to monitor the cycles and we are going to change the dependencies we are going to set the priorities success conditions and failure conditions and we are also going to upload the calendars for example i have some requirement is there i want to run my data state job from monday to friday 
every day at eve at the morning 6:18 am central whenever my server time reaches to 6:18 am central automatically my control m job will start okay and this job also will have different first one is a file watcher job is there second one is a actual uh, base job is available group job is available and okay in a group we have totally uh, main uh, table job is available what are the file watcher jobs available in control m those are used to check whether today's file arrive in a source path or not okay like this we are going to do kind of scheduling and we are going to pass what is the job name table name command, what command we are going to run these are all the things also i will show you how to do a kind of sequences how to do a kind of scheduling process also that is we are going to discuss in a sequence right next we will go for the quality stage part what is this quality stage what is the use of this quality stage quality stage is nothing but a a kind of quality tool which is used to measure the quality of your data in the earlier versions of data stage we don't have quality stage also included in data stage that is separate tool we need to purchase separately essential quality stage but at the time most of the clients are used uh, trillium trillium is a software which is a uh, kind of uh, doing for a quality operations but from 8 version of data stage onwards IBM people integrated this data stage with quality stage by using this quality features whatever we have now you are going to be able to provide a better quality data to the customers means for the end users right what kind of quality operation we can perform what kind of stages available in quality stage when any customer for example open a credit card what are the address he entered in a credit card application form before loading the data into the target warehouse we want to check whether this is a better quality data or not if that is a better quality we will load it otherwise we will reject it to do such a operations in quality stage we have even though in data stage different type of the quality stage stages is added if you see in the data stage okay parallel jobs environment you can find different type of quality stage stays added okay that's what actually i showed you first one job which is completely going to give you a, a quality uh, that is investigation stage okay if you want again we can log into that um, data stage environment again, and we can see some quality stuff also just let me log in again in other project just uh, we have i'm logging into one project i want to see whether we have any quality state jobs exist in this one we have some backups okay which we have created in previous project and i will also show you for your project your course when we are discussing also how to create these quality state jobs just see here here we have some of the quality stage jobs is available okay those jobs whatever we have just uh, this is a quality stage investigation stage job just i open uh, in first also this is the quality stage stage we added in the see in earlier what we did is first we are going to do the quality operation then we go load the data into the etl process to do some kind of transformation then finally load into the warehouse but nowadays because of quality stage also integrated in data stage you can be able to perform both quality as well as data stage both operations in a single job itself right this is a kind of quality stage job you can run this job also we can see the data as well just i'm running this job with the source is some kind of data right just it's compiled successfully and i want to see my source data what kind of data i am taking to check my quality of the data just let me open my source file data also you see here in the columns employee id first name last name just an example of the some data i am doing a quality operations on the data finally i am going to get the data just i am running my job if you did any small modification also it require compilation in data stage to process that just i am running up this data stage job okay once we run we can see the output of the data here differently why we put three quality stages on the same data we have different options from same stage to show you in a simple all the operations
right it's running because of no it need to apply some rules right they show you in uh, repository we have declaration rules it need to apply those rules it will take some time to apply those rules on the data output just let me check whether this is running sometimes due to some issues or something uh, in that case we need to release those jobs also. sometimes jobs need to be killed okay that's called abnormal termination okay those things also we are going to do in data stage even the same kind of operation whatever we can perform okay killing and unlocking those things we can be able to perform even in a, a unix box as a cost is sort installing on unix we can be able to perform as well just what is the we call this also it is big time how what is the quality what kind of equipment and enhance awareness and views are the two stages available in this means this stage these are used to check the address of customers national standards is a stage with the national customers and waves is the stage the difference between mns and waves is uh, while you are using a job with waves stage we required a waves database class uh, we are going to get the database from the ibm okay that database whatever we got when we purchase the software that database having a some kind of built in rules for example we are writing address uh, sunny wells california okay in new york state but actually is this sunny wells available in new york state or not it's going to check means already what are the policies available in the different countries so all the rules for example if we take us us customer is mentioned his address flat number 6 house number 511 uh, some okay mountain hills apartments sunny wells california state name they mentioned is okay uh, new york and country name they mentioned for example into uk united kingdom in the kind of situations whenever they mention we need to check where this customer address whatever they mention while opening credit card while opening any kind of bank accounts or any any kind of okay driving license like this we want to check that if you want to check that we are going to use it kind of stages in data stage by this data set to check that such information we use waves stage okay here waves means worldwide address verification and enhancement system let me go back to this one if you see here now the job is finished let me view the data of tar for example target level view data view the one output data okay what are the operation we made it investigation operation in the 90 records we have actually in the 90 records we got only 19 records with the good customer data mm, sorry one second it's getting some issue in the file no problem we can see that file in different okay in different way maybe in this project we have some issue or something that is the reason we are getting but actual okay in file we can see color exact data that is not an issue we can see this file even in going by going into the this path also in e drive in some sample data go into the e drive of this system we can see there as well just let me open that system we have some folder that's called some sample data folder under this we have a folder that's called sample data there we can find the data what is the data name qsinv3.txt right let me open that qsinv3.txt this is the data we have actually see this is the data we are getting here what we check is i think we check there is a whether customer first name or last name is correct or not okay see f means first name all the customers whatever the mention in the name column those are the first names which are satisfied that data only it's going to show in the quality stage output right like this we can also do some kind of other quality operations okay even standardization operation and everything apart from this you can also do a kind of other uh, operations okay apart from this uh, normal jobs or something we can also see some kind of the project related jobs also how to work and how to kind do a kind of the complex jobs designed see here just i'm opening one of the project related jobs which i have i'm going to show you just uh, i'm more making this one to understand you project here i'm also opening the job because this is a, some of the biggest job it's 
it will take some little bit time to open that okay let me okay this is under project this is also one more project uh, prog underscore dev like this I am going to put the name to understand just okay because the other different project folders available we can be able to open some of the jobs under this project folders just let me open after renaming this I can be able to open some of the job which we have in a project we can see that as we are renaming and at the same time we are opening the job it's taking too much time Right. In the meantime, we okay, I mean, okay, that is the, about the quality stage. What we are going to discuss. The one week of time is we are going to cover completely on quality stage. Next is the information analyzer. This is also a newly added uh, component in data stage version eight onwards. We are going to discuss that one as well. How to do a kind of uh, information analysis on the data. This is a client component which we are going to use to do the kind of information analysis. Let me open this client component. That is IBM Info, InfoSphere Information Server Console. Web, sphere, web server console is for admin this information server console is to do kind of uh, uh, information analyzer it means what is this information analyzer first here once we load the data into the data warehouse while implementing any warehouse we want to do a kind of analysis on the data whether this is a correct data is it following 100% uh, primary key rules or not and information services director uh, kind of okay activities if you want to perform we simply use a this uh, information server console activity. What are the different kind of information analyze activities we can perform? While implementing any data stage, just let me act, log in first, then we can discuss how to work on it also. Uh, one second this is logging maybe the system is today a little bit slow all right in the meantime we can also see okay see these project jobs just uh, let me open another project job in data stage this time open see this this is a job which we have here okay this job we implemented for a project with the source is database and target is database like this we are going to implement this job the job having source database target database and project of this also database with the transformation state like this we are going to implement a jobs even though we can see some complex jobs as well sometimes we may also see some complex jobs and okay some sales activity we may have so check okay. some complex jobs also we are going to have okay some see this is a little bit complex job we have so many stages involved in the job see here okay like this we can also design some complex jobs even in a project level while we are discussing in a project also right just uh, we'll discuss about this called information analyzer Right, before that is opening, let me discuss what we are going to cover actually in the information analyzer. When it comes to this information analyzer, actually, okay, that's simply we are going to call as a data profiling process. First, we need to know what is this data profiling, what kind of profiling we are going to do. Here, profiling in the sense we are going to do different kind of analysis on the data, like column analysis, primary key analysis, okay, foreign key analysis, cross domain analysis, baseline analysis, analysis, okay, results publications deleted statistic reports, baseline analysis reports, cross-domain analysis summary statistic report, 
okay such a kind of the reports also we can get and such a kind of analysis also we can perform on the data whether the column level data whatever we have is proper data or not that is simply we are going to call as a column analysis what are the primary key we are implementing on the target tables are we having good primary key columns or not we don't have any null values in the columns or not okay is it having any duplicate columns in this one or not to check such a kind of the things on the data which is available which is we are ready to load into warehouse that is simply we are going to call as a information analysis it's taking too much time let me open one more already running but not response terminate this yes just let me try again but in actual class we can discuss it's a long back i log in Administrator, admin is the password. Yep, now we can be able to log in. Right. Now I am logging into my user. Okay, with my entering of my user into the my information server console to do like okay kind of primary key analysis to do kind of foreign foreign key analysis like this, and with the password and the host name, just login. That is completely going to discuss about information analyzer as well as information services director client component. and also we going to discuss about information server that's the iis administration okay you can see most of the requirements also iis server admin part as well see here this is called information server console here we are going to perform a different kind of the analysis here okay column analysis baseline analysis public publish analysis results table management key management and developing this quality and okay providing this see here if you want to do a kind of analysis first you need to create one new actually okay select the type of project do you want to do the information services or information analyzer yes information analyzer i'm going to put my project name is the okay demo underscore project like this we are going to create a project once we create a project just it will take to create some time Yes, it's created the okay. Let me demo the project. Means it's a okay, it's a kind of okay. Uh, empty project is going to be. now once it is created the empty project. Okay, these all the options will be automatically enabled. Information analysis dashboards. Means we need to set up some kind of environment back in background first. Once we set up some kind of environment in background first, then we can work on to the this information analysis part. right if you see here in information analyzer first okay project type project properties and project dashboards after that we can go for the this column analysis baseline analysis publish and these kind of the this can be able to do here column analysis means before doing this column analysis you need to import the metadata first okay that's what actually we need to do first when project properties also data source which data source you want to take it of the which host data you want to take. or if you want to add any other source also you can right now we don't have any data source we simply we can add a new data source uh we have a source name is this is the one my server name is this is the one i am adding this server name it will take some time to add okay like this we are going to add the server and if you want to add any new user also see here information analyzer data steward role information analyzer business analyst role information analyzer business operator role what kind of role you want to take okay you can take those specific role you can simply play save as when you click a do a save as administrator is the user he is having these all the roles in information analyzer see analytics engine is available analytics database which database you want to connect with analytics analytics settings you can do here what kind of analysis you want to do see in column analysis how much nullability you want to check how much uniqueness you want to check how much constraint threshold you can you want to check so all the settings we need to do, even the for the primary key analysis also even for the cross domain analysis also okay once you did the all the settings then you can be able to back, go back to these kind of analysis okay in actual class we will show you how to do the, these kind of background settings for information analyzer how to do this kind of claim column level analysis base level analysis okay publish the analytics and table management key and cross domain analytics also these kind of things also how to design and how to create a kind of dashboard to set up a quality dashboard also you know, all the things we can be able to discuss right this is about the basic information about the one second i'm exit from this 
that is about the okay information services console that is simply used for the information analyzer after discussing about the information analyzer we'll go for a IIS that is IBM information server administration whenever we are working on to the data stage 7.5 x2 and earlier versions we don't have this uh, client component this is the one actually okay this is admin this is common from 7.5 also this is the one client component we have here that is a web console for IBM information server if you want to completely apply for a position of data state administrator nowadays we have a requirement with the who are having a good exposure and good experience into the web console for IBM information server what are the kinds of activities you can be able to perform with using of this IBM information server why a new client component is added for the administration activities apart from the existing admin the existing data state administrator client component is a kind of desktop administrator which is going to use for a okay which is going to use to do the basic uh, desktop uh, admin activities only which is not used for the kind of okay um, web based administrator activities but when it comes to 8 version onwards means IBM whenever it is taken in the year of 2007 onwards we have this uh, web console for IBM information server administrator client component now let me log in what activities we are going to do uh, okay with this to show you just uh, if you see here we have IBM WebSphere data state administration which is used to opening for information server web console and setting up a project I have project I okay I have project uh, icons in the console and customizing the project dashboards setting up the security and creating the users console as in the security roles to the users and groups managing the license activities managing acquisitions managing the logs managing scheduling activities backup and restoring of the servers also these are all the kind of activities we can be able to perform with using of this one okay just let me log in to show you right now because see this is a web based client component it's going to open like a web based client component just it's logging means it's opening right now I am specifying my username what is the username we have and uh, the password of my system now I am logging into this IBM information server what are the activities we can be able to perform in this IBM information server how we are going to perform just let me give you a brief introduction in demo if you see in these folders here okay in 8 version also we have only up to home administration tab glossary tab only sorry report tab only but in 8.5 we have newly added uh, features is there that is business glossary tab is also added and inferences catalog tab is also added and report right what are the major activities we can perform with using of this IIS in IBM information server this is a home page it's going to give only welcome screen Next in administration tab, when we go here, you will be able to perform majorly domain management activities, session management activities, users and roles creations, log management activities, schedule management activities. This is very important actually. In these all the tabs also, the main thing what this IAS admin is going to do in data stage means, see, this IAS is nothing but a one of the server Okay, it's a combination of five servers, data stage server and information services fast track, metadata workbench and quality stage port. Okay, like this kind of all the combination of these servers we simply going to call as a this IBM information server. Just I'm going to show you how to create a new user. Okay, we will discuss in actual class how to do this uh, uh, engine credentials, how to do a kind of user history configuration, how to make a, a active sessions, how to... Uh, uh, do a kind of okay deactivating the sessions also all things we can discuss but just let me show you how to create a users to create the users means today one new employee joined into our team then we are going to set up call or we send a mail to my admin saying that one new employee joined into our company then simply click on this users tab when you click on this users tab actually we have different users is already existed okay Suresh, Babu, okay, like this usernames are SSS server, 
admin like this. If I want to create one more user, click on new user tab. Like this. See one more thing you should remember here. As a IBM information server administrator, if we create a one user, with that user we are going to tag that user to data state projects. Just I will show that process also. Just I am creating one new user. My username is for example data stage. Okay. Password also I am putting data stage. Just common. And confirming the password also. One second. Right. Here, for example, a new user is joined in our company now. Today, okay, we are going to create a one new user here, right? The password, confirm password is again data stage. I'm specifying, okay, first name, for example, creating is um, Suresh. Second name, for example, Babu is creating. Once you created, okay, these are all the things here, whatever we want to create the. What are the right? What are the password we are creating here? Okay, based on password and username, mandatory options we specified. After mandatory options here, we simply going to okay uh, select the roles also here. What are the roles we can select? Is okay, common metadata user, suit administrator, suit component user, and other okay normal roles also. See here, there are so many roles is available. If you want to select all the roles, you can select. Or only data state developer, you can select. Also, okay, data state and data state and quality state developer also, and okay other things also we will be able to select here. Once you selected these all the roles, okay, select all the roles. Now simply save and close. We are creating a one user with the name data stage. Okay. Now this is the way we are going to use this admin entire thing. Okay. Creation of users, logging of components, and creation of user schedules and information server cat like reports, everything. Now I'm simply logging out from this uh, web based administrator. Once we One second. 
right I'm closing that once I close that okay once I close that here that one simply I'm logging into the this instead of client component okay this time logging into this this desktop administrator once we logging into this particular desktop administrator client component there you will be able to see what are the new project okay new developer role is added or new developer name is added that you will be able to see in normal desktop see the properties here there you can go and you can open that okay properties tab in a properties tab you have an option like a permission right see here data stage is another new user is added with the data stage and quality state administrator role if he is not a quality state administrator role okay you can select the roles also right right now already that user is added why means that is added in the that particular project okay that particular web console administrator automatically this particular developer is coming as a data state and quality state administrator also see here okay different different uh, roles will also be available into this data state okay see this is the way we are going to use the admin admin client component as well as the these are all the client components apart from this and we are also going to use the IBM Informant Server Manager Console, Import Export Manager, Multi-Client Manager Client Component and Informant Services Fast Track also. These are all the things we are going to discuss while discussing the course. Okay. After completion of these all the client components whatever we mentioned in our course content then we will go to Data Stage Project. As a developer, we know entire tool part, but we should also know the project, right? When we are knowing the project, okay, uh, tool, we should also know real-time project, how we are going to work on the project. In this project, okay, the project architecture we need to mention, and uh, we also need to mention uh, dimensional table names, one second. Okay, what kind of components we are going to simply discuss in the project means tell me okay about the project in the sense when we go, when we are asking that question you need to tell me about the project architectures, dimension tables and what kind of pack tables is there, what is the flow of your project, okay, what are the different subject areas we are going to have in a project and okay project flow, the job designs process and complex job designs and unit testing process, deployment process, creation of jobs and development over your, over your document, tech specs, test cases, okay, production support process and we are also going to discuss some of the unit scripting for automation of the code and we are also going to discuss about the some of the third part scheduling tools to discuss the uh, scheduling process as well as problem tickets and fixing the defects whatever we are getting in a QC while my code is into SAT, SAT and UAT phases right while discussing these all the things first we will discuss about the what is the okay actual way and why we are going to create the this project uh, and why we are developing this particular project in a company okay first we are going to discuss about the project overview information just let me show you some documents related to that one just okay the project overview why we are implementing this particular project just okay what are the major advantages of implementing this project what kind of benefits we are implementing okay what is the architecture of the particular project what are the different type of source systems is available and af after that we also need to discuss about the what kind of subject areas is there in the project how we are going to implement a those subject areas here in a project and what kind of dimension tables is there what are the different facts see if you see here the major subject areas involved in this particular project subject area means a particular business unit Okay, what are the major subject areas means involved about the arrangement, okay, event, transaction, condition, location, product, like this we have a different subject areas either and uh, different, okay, tables, what are the tables majorly involved in these subject areas, like you see, these are the kind of the tables we also have, we will also discuss what kind of tables we also involve in this particular project and what are the kind of tables, what kind of columns we have, what are the uh, other tables we have, those all things also we are going to discuss. Apart from this, we'll also discuss about the okay. In, while discussing an admin, 
Okay, I'll also discuss admin complete part. Apart from this, we'll also discuss about uh, some Unix scripting as well. Means, while every day we are receiving a file from source system, you are also doing kind of a basic validation, archival process, conversions, date validations, so all the things we are going to do. For example, if a, one job is failed at midnight 12 o'clock, whenever one job is failed at midnight 12 o'clock, I want to receive a one mail from corresponding ETL server. I am going to create a one script and if any job fails immediately I want to get a message to my cell and once the big file is transferred and a complex job is finished I want to send a message to my all entire team saying that so and so complex process is finished today for today's batch processing like this if you want to get such a kind of information we simply use an option that is okay going to call as a scripting that unix scripting how to write the unix scripts what are the basic commands we are going to use while writing the script? What is the purpose of writing these kind of scripts? So all the things also we are going to discuss while discussing the 15 hours of the project. Okay, this project will take up to 15 hours of time. Okay, completely last uh, uh, 15 hours of time we are going to completely spend for the project. Okay, I will show you completely live environment how to work on project. What kind of work we are going to get? Okay, so all the things we will be able to discuss with the different different uh, domains. And we also discuss what kind of basic Unix commands we are going to use while implementing any data warehousing project. For example, to run a data stage job or to stop a data stage job which is already running, to compile a data stage job, okay, uh, to see the log of the job, which kind of commands we are going to use in a Unix level, those kind of commands also we are going to discuss. And apart from that, we are also going to discuss about the some kind of testing process. Because as a developer, okay, nowadays there we also need to know a little bit information about the unit testing process. How we are going to involve in the unit testing process? What are the ETL components we develop? Here, while implementing the ETL testing, means that's the unit testing part as well as ETL testing part also. Any other project, what kind of challenges we are going to face? How we are going to do the ETL testing phase? Okay, and uh, what are the major phases involved in ETL testing? If you see here, data completeness testing, data transformation testing data quality testing, report testing means that's a simply kind of the uh, again uh, Cognos or micro strategy and report people will come and integration testing. If you are already some part of code is into production, if you are deploying a new code into production, you are also going to do a kind of testing that simply we are going to call as a regression testing, user exception testing and some other kind of non-functional testing like recovery, backup and recovery process and security testing, performance and scalability. How to do these all the kinds of testings? What kind of process we are going to do? Okay, in unit testing, what kind of test cases we are going to write? What kind of defects we are going to get? How are you going to handle that? Okay, so all the things also we are going to discuss theoretically and as well as practically also how we are going to write the test cases for those. Here, if you see, okay, we are also going to have some kind of testing. Okay, sorry, not this one. Okay, this is the kind of the test cases what we are going to write in our projects. What are the test cases we wrote? For example, those test cases, if you see here, data level, okay, source to data level validation, validation of record counts, insertion and target level validation, reconciliation check, validation of data, nullability validation. Like this, we are going to write some kind of test cases for the, our uh, jobs. And uh, what are the test cases we write? Okay, what are the queries we write there? Okay, what kind of the process we are implementing here? So, all the things also we are going to discuss while discussing about the project. And apart from this, while implementing any project, we also need to know what kind of documentation we are going to create which. Okay. For every project, we are going to create some kind of documentation like a job design documents, okay, subject area documents, ORI documents, those kind of the, the documents we are create. How to create those kind of documents, okay, what kind of the quality implementations we can be able to do and how to connect with XML applications, what kind of new uh, possibilities is there, what kind of admin work we will be able to perform in as a data state administrator while working on any project. So all the things we will discuss and uh, in our course, apart from this, okay, we if anyone wants Teradata, we are also going to connect with the Teradata as well, we will also discuss Teradata also, okay, Teradata basic part as well, at least, okay, what is the Teradata, because nowadays when we observe the most of the requirement, we are going to be able to perform or we are able to get a calls, data state plus data data and data state how to uh, 
writing a basic uh, BTEC scripts, how to do a kind of uh, these kind of the scripts, uh, fast load, multi load, okay, uh, utilities, how to use those, those also we are going to discuss apart from this. And if anyone wants to do any kind of certification, okay, I'll also help you do, do certification. I'll also give you some special kind of training to help you out the certification matter and translation process common. And we are also going to provide a good materials which is going to have a with the data warehousing basic part, data stays, and as well as Unix commands, shell scripting some database related documents also okay what kind of questions we can expect from the data uh, database as well so all the things we are going to discuss up to the duration of uh, 50 hours of time we are going to spend for this in this one we are also going to discuss elaboratively with each and every question and with each and every some kind of scenarios what you are going to face how to clear the interviews so all the things we will be able to discuss any questions Okay, if uh, you don't have any questions, then okay, uh, I'm good. Uh, okay, we will start our batch as well. Okay, our next schedule, we'll start our actual classes. Okay, thank you all. Thank you for joining.